the Parks Academy, where we discuss and celebrate all things theme parks related. We focus mainly on Disney parks and resorts in both Anaheim and Orlando. My name is Paige. My name is Steven. And today we will be wrapping up our Park Icons miniseries. Officially, this time, because we said we were going to before and we ended up not, so. Yes. Now we're stuck in this cycle of like, what are we going to do next? Yep. We have some ideas. We have some ideas, but this was the snacks and then this, I feel like they were home runs so we have to figure out other stuff but um it's good it is is all good what's uh going on with you this week that has you excited or is there anything top of mind i have one and a half things okay my one full thing is that the little mermaid is available to stream this week. You can buy the digital version of it on Apple. Apple, TV, correct. Apple and movies. There's a couple of places yeah, you can buy it. But it's not like Disney Plus yet. Correct. Mm-hmm. That's not probably going to be till much later. I'd say like the fall. I heard August is what. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say at least the fall, maybe September. Mm. Um. Yeah, so that's exciting. We're probably going to do like a movie night sometime this week or next and set up our basement surround sound lights and all that fun stuff um make a big to do about it so that'll be really fun to watch that with our daughter because she's in a huge little mermaid phase right now big time yeah my half thing that i'm excited about is i have one day left of work yeah excellent hooray that's great so it's like a half thing because it's bittersweet but right and you were like committed um, for like five work days over the summer. So it's yes. not like you're going in every day. You still Correct. have your education, educator summer off. Yep. But yeah, that's yep, cool. Yep. Good. How good, about good, you? Good, good, good. Um, I am, you know, I'm excited because last week my Doc Ondor, Doc Ondor Hasbro figure came in, which is really lame and silly, but I pre-ordered it on May the 5th, May the 4th. Whoa. Um, Revenge of the Fifth. Um, I pre-ordered it on May 4th when it was released on Shop Disney. And it just came in this last week. It is Doc Ondar from Don Accord. Um, Don, gosh, I am like, I need to pull myself together. It is Doc Ondor from Doc Ondor's Den of Antiquities and Galaxy's Edge. And he has like two holocrons and a little sword and a stormtrooper helmet. It's this cool little action figure, and I really am a huge fan of it. And that's that's what I'm feeling. Yeah, he's a fun little alien looking dude. He's very cool. Yeah. He so. matches your office with all of your other Star Wars I know, buddies. I have too many Star Wars things in my office. You have a lot of Star Wars buddies. Um when we were at Galaxy's Edge last, I had asked one of the cast members who worked at the Den of Antiquities where Doc Ondor was, because they had the curtain closed. And they were like he is actually on a expedition right now on a different planet looking for more goods for his shop. And I was like, that's not really what I was asking. I thought maybe he broke or something like the animatronic, but they treated it like it was lore. So I had to play along and be like, wink, wink. Yeah, sure. Yeah, they had the He's off planet, character. of course. Okay. Um, we are going to talk about the Matterhorn bobsled. Sleds, uh, plural. And uh, I'm really excited about this one. I, I When I was choosing um, park icons, this was like right up there for me with Sleeping Beauty's Castle. So I am really excited about this. Uh, before we get into it, I just want to say a quick shout out to our sponsor, Deep Cut, for, um, for um, supporting the show. You can get 10% off your first order of Deep Cut of um, record accessories and displays and other cool things with uh with code tpa10 at checkout and uh, for those of you who have been leaving us reviews and ratings we appreciate it and for those who haven't uh we would just also you know continue to encourage you to do so because it is certainly a big help for us with uh searchability and visibility and just credibility um all the abilities on um on apple podcast so let's go ahead and jump right in to the history of the matterhorn So the Matterhorn bobsleds is right 
in Disneyland, if you are going down Main Street and you see Cinderella's Castle, it is directly to the right of it. Um, this big, beautiful mountain is actually a lot of firsts for not just Disneyland, but for the world. So it is the first thrill ride that ever came to Disneyland. It's the first tubular steel track roller coaster in the world. It is the first roller coaster with multiple cars on the same track made possible through individual braking zones. And it is the first roller coaster built by Aero Development, later called Aerodynamics, which went on to become a leading worldwide supplier of roller coasters. Hmm. This, um, there's a really cool history about all this whole thing. Like after we kind of had a slump of Pixar Pal around and then the Mickey hat, which was good episodes, I thought, good mm -hmm. content, but they were kind of like... There wasn't a ton of background yeah, about it was like, the actual attraction or anything. One, because the Mickey Sorcerer hat didn't have an attraction. Right. And two, because yeah. the Pal around is a Ferris wheel. Yeah, and, and Eisner was like, let's just throw it in there and that was yep. great and that yep. was good and we, we'd love to hear it. But this one is more like on par with the old stuff, which I love. So, um, I want to, so the Matterhorn opened on June 14th, 1959. It was one of three major new Tomorrowland attractions to open that year. Like I said, it was built by Aero Development and WED Imagineering. And, um, it consisted of a wood and steel infrastructure surrounded by a man-made rock. Um, here's the thing that I didn't know that I found to be very interesting and kind of compelling. Um, originally, the site of the Matterhorn was a large pile of dirt that was excavated and put off to the side from Sleeping Beauty's castle. Really? So they built Sleeping Beauty's castle, and then they put the huge pile of dirt right next to it and mm -hmm. just sat it there. Um, it was right in between Fantasyland and Tomorrowland, and it received the nickname Holiday Hill because Walt covered it um in like fake snow and he added some um toboggans later on they called it snow hill um but like he really... as the park was open yeah there was people a big came in and there was just a dirt pile that they decorated that is correct so <laughs> yeah it's it's not so Walt also said like okay here's what i want to do let's have let's bring in snow every day and we will go ahead and create this really fun sledding experience for our guests and everyone was like walt you're you're crazy brother we can't bring in snow to southern california especially during the summers and expect for that to be cost effective and smart you are literally melting your money away um eventually they they realized that they had to do something about this hill because while people were enjoying themselves on it and they put some plants up there to kind of make it a little bit more pretty and inviting um it it uh, adopted this name called Lover's Lane because in the evenings at Disneyland, um, Ew. lovers would go up there and 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 um, Ew. they would uh, um, they would they would they would be up on Lover's Lane together in the dark of the Anaheim nights. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So that was becoming a problem because there's no finagling in Disneyland. I don't yep. think. Yep. Nope. That's probably frowned upon. This is a rumor. But there's also a rumor that one of the groundskeeper was planting the devil's lettuce up on, um, oh, up on sneaky, the hill. Sneaky. So at one point, didn't you see that growing? Well, I don't know, but at one point, Disneyland was home of a cannabis farm, supposedly. Wow. Again, I don't know if that's true, and I believe that at the time it had to have been much more legal in the 50s. I don't know what the laws were on recreation. I don't think there was such a thing as recreational cannabis back in the 50s. No, but everybody um, in the 60s and 70s partook in it, so I don't yeah. know how much they... I don't know. Yeah. So anyway, I don't think we they had like there. an Apple Store dispensary um, located there, but anyway, it was becoming a problem between the between the uh, the canoodling and the weed puffing up there. It was just, it was too much. Yep. And, and there's no like confirmation of any kind of like recreational or any kind of illicit drug use, but it was a rumor. So right. Walt was like really trying to turn this thing into Snow Hill and it got shut down, no good. And so it was recommended by Jack Sawyers to transform it into some kind of a snow mountain with a double toboggan theme. It had about six different names that were pitched. And one of the things they wanted to call it was Mount Disneyland. 
They said maybe Disneyland Mountain, Sorcerer's Mountain, Magic Mountain, which is interesting because that is in Santa Clarita, right mm-hmm. in Southern California, which yep. is owned by Six Flags, Fantasy Mountain, and then Echo Mountain. Interesting. Uh, none of these things really came to be. One thing that they had also discussed was um, potentially turning this thing into something called Candy Rock Mountain. And it was going to be almost like a Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory kind of thing, where the whole, we posted this on our Instagram like two or three days ago, if you saw it. Um, And it's basically this sketch of like a mountain covered with candy and lollipops and frosting and stuff. And um, that certainly did not happen. I think it would have probably fit in okay with Tomorrowland, or excuse me, with Fantasyland. But um, that was eventually, like, that was just like no, a no go. I don't. Well, they would have been like bringing Candyland to life, right? And also, like you know, ants would have, right? Would have really would had have. their had their way with it. There would have been a picnic every day. So, um, Walt Disney was in Switzerland in 1958, and he was filming Third Man on the Mountain, which was one of his live action sort of Swiss Family Robinson sort of films. And part of the film had the Matterhorn in it, and so Walt took a he bought a postcard that he sent to Vic Green. And the postcard said, literally, Vic, build this, Walt. And the coaster opened in uh, June 14th, 1959, like I said, all because, um, you know, uh, Walt sent someone a postcard that said, build this. And, That's um, fantastic. Honestly, it is, but like... Do they have that postcard on display somewhere? I don't know where the postcard is. I didn't see it, but I found like four different sources that all confirmed They should that's what have they said. that postcard somewhere, whether it's like the mm-hmm. Walt Disney Family Museum or yeah, in some sort of Disney right. exhibit. I feel mm-hmm. like if they put that in the attraction, it would be too dangerous to have something so special. Yeah. I, in the queue, but it was. It, they could have a replica. That's really cute. It is kind of fun. I feel bad. I, if, if my boss, if like I had a boss, I guess I'm my boss, but if I had a boss and they just wrote me and said, hey, do this. I'd be like, no, but I do have clients that sometimes write me and say, hey, do this. And I'm and like, like, I'm like, okay. yes, I like my paycheck. So, OK. And if it was Walt right. Disney saying it, I guess it's sort of like. And if to, you're searching for an idea and he's you know, like, hey, here, here's the winner. Yeah. Make it know, happen. Heavy is the head that wears the Disney crown. There you go. So um, it was nearly an impossible feat to figure out because, again, like this was the first ride with the tubular steel and. Walt basically just told Imagineers, like, you need to figure this out. This is what we're going to do. It was, um, it was, uh, it was built, um, around the Skyway, which if you recall or have seen, there used to be Skyway gondolas that went through the mountain. Sure. Um, and so, um, that was sort of part of the whole experience. Um, the original bobsleds, actually, uh, people would, um, sit on each other's laps Instead of being separated by two different cars, so oh. um, if you know, if if not to, not to be blue here, but if you know, you sat in each other's laps and then went over to to Lovers Hill, um, Lovers Lane, you, you're really having a day at Disney. Oh my! Um, but anyway, so so that's kind of how it all how it all came to be. I did want to very quickly um, say that uh, where is it here? I did want to want to quickly just talk about the Aero Development people. Um, they were a company that were created in 1945 in the wake of the end of World War II. And uh, they became famously known for many rides, including the Matterhorn bobsled. Uh, and they uh, also created a bunch of other attractions at Disney as well. I'm going to read off like a couple of them. But they're credited for Dumbo the Flying Elephant, Mad Tea Party, Mr. Toad, uh, Snow White Scary Adventure, Alice in Wonderland, It's a Small World. Um, all of the ones, both in Disney, Disney World, and also in the uh, World's Fair. Mm-hmm. They did Pirates of the Caribbean, Haunted Mansion, uh, Flight to the Moon, and Peter Pan's Flight, and then some other ones that are no longer um, no longer in service. Interesting. So a lot of the classics. Yeah. What I also read is that they were um, the first to create a ride called the Coal Cracker which is in Hershey, oh, Pennsylvania. Correct, yeah. So they did rides in Hershey Park. They did that one. They were involved with the Super Duper Looper, which I believe was the first, I think, I don't want to, this isn't history on on Super Duper Looper, so if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I believe that was the first um, upside-down roller coaster east of the Mississippi River, I think. 
I think I've heard that before. So me, yeah, these guys had a pretty big, pretty big footprint um, on all kinds of things like that. One of the things too that I, I, I actually found to be kind of interesting was that um, uh, the originally Tomorrowland was where it was opened. So what I, th- I think it's kind of weird that amongst like you know all the stuff going on at Tomorrowland at the time, um, it was you know a, a a staple on the maps you'll see that that the Matterhorn was actually part of Tomorrowland but in uh 1972 it was officially declared to be part of Fantasyland which I actually think matches so much better um overall um right now of course there's two different lines that you would go into so there's like a Fantasyland ride or line and then there's a Tomorrowland line and um you can you know get a different experience based on you know which side of the of the mountain that you are actually on. Um, I had mentioned this before, but originally, you know, the Matterhorn was actually filled uh, with holes that allowed it to make way for the Disney Sky uh, Skyway to travel through the mountain. And um, it was, um, yeah, I mean, it was just kind of this really cool. Um, uh, it was just like this really cool, um, you know, staple of of, of Disney parks. And um, it was so popular, in fact, that there is a video out of the Shah of Iran visiting and heading the Matterhorn with Walt Disney, um, which I think is kind of funny. And uh, yeah, it was, um, it was, you know, it was, it's, it's kind of just a cool thing how like all sort of fell together. That is really sweet. Did you find out if I'm wrong or not? Or are you still um, looking? On Hershey Park's actual website, they are quoted with saying, experience the first ever looping coaster on the East Coast. Bam. Okay, so, so there you go. That's their claim. We'll take them for their word. Um, so the Matterhorn also was the first mountain. I mentioned this, but it was like the first mountain, the first roller coaster in Disney parks, and it actually gave way to other um, other great attractions like Space Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, Splash Mountain, like all these mountain. Because like if you you know if you're at Disney, you'll realize like oh, but there are a lot of like attractions that are named mountain. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was like the first one and kind of gave its inspiration for it. Uh, the toboggans are actually, the ride vehicles are actually basically the exact same ride vehicles as well that you would experience in Florida's Space Mountain, mm-hmm. which I think you knew, but they're very similar. Yes, I love, I like that design as we've talked about better than the Disneyland Space Mountain, but I know Steven has different thoughts on that. Yeah, it's not my. It's not great. Well, and I, we'll talk about the ride mechanics in a moment. I think of the Matterhorn, but it's uh, it's it's a very rough, bumpy ride that I don't think lends itself well to a overly enjoyable experience because you get off of it feeling all creaky and like you were thrust around every which direction, which is not the greatest feeling. I don't think. And <laughs> I think you have that feeling because you literally were. Yeah. Well, you and I went on it last time in yep. 2020, and I remember both getting off like. Oh, you know, that was not I know. the best. I know. I'm going to hit you with a couple of little fun details about the ride before we talk about a few other things. Okay. Uh, part of its grand opening, Walt hired the Sierra Club, members of the Sierra Club, to climb the mountain. And from 1959 to 79, they scaled it about eight times a day. The outside of the outside the of Matterhorn? Yes. So there were, wow. there were like Sierra climbers in their, in their um, Swiss garb that would you know, literally mountain climb yeah, up to eight times a day. They would wow. just kind of be going up and down and waving at guests and things like that. Interesting. Mickey Mouse has climbed it at one point. Cute. Of course, we know that Tinkerbell yes. is up there and she goes down yes. and um and and is part of the, the... My question is, did Mickey Mouse wear his um his little outfit that he wears in the cartoon where he's yodeling at the top of the mountain? Let me see if I can find because a picture. Because that would be really cute. Okay. So let me see if I can find a picture of Mickey Mouse climbing the Matterhorn. So there actually is a picture of Mickey up at the top of the Matterhorn with Goofy. And yes, he is in fact oh. wearing his little cute outfit. It's very hard to see because it's an old photo. But there is a photo of him and Goofy at the top in 1998. And they are in like their Swiss outfits. Yep. I am There's another one, Christmas 20, 2006. When Mickey is climbing it and he's wearing like a red Christmas um, sweater, Christmas, yeah, it's like a red climbing suit. There's a very, very horribly unsettling photo of Mickey climbing up the side. <laughs> Did you see that one? Yeah. Yeah. And he's like reaching up and it looks 
scary. A um, couple very cute pictures too, I think, of um, of um, God, a couple of pictures too of Mickey and Minnie climbing. And that's not the funny thing. The funny thing is that the caption on this photo says "Rock Climbing Cinderella Castle at Magic Kingdom." Oh, none and of that's And it's from correct. a company called because I don't want to put anyone on blast. Yep. But they do not have the right information at all. Classic. Um, yeah, really fun. So yes, Mickey has climbed that bad boy. Kind of fun. Like I said, so I did say that Tinkerbell um, climbed it. Yes, because she ride, rode the zip line, rides the zip line. Yes. So um, when I think of Tinkerbell, I would typically think of a, I'm going to say for like a Tinkerbell in Disney before they, you know, um, they brought out like that little tiny Tinkerbell at D23. Sure. Yep. Or whatever that event was. I don't think it was D23. It was something else. I can't remember what that was. But regardless. It just was this year. It was I think it's going to be a petite young woman who is in the Disney College program who's yep. Tinkerbell. Right? That's who I would mm -hmm. imagine going down. Mm -hmm. uh, the first Tinkerbell in the parks was a woman by the name of Tiny Klein. She was a Hungarian-born circus performer. She performed with the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey. And she was... 70 years old Holy when she played Tinkerbell. Um, she died in 1964. She was born in the 1800s. And there are fantastic photos of Tiny Klein as Tinkerbell. And she is indeed an old woman. Um, Good for her. It's really, I mean, you know, you got to have the stuff to That's do it. Granny Tink right there. And the Granny title. And I can't imagine, um, I can't imagine anyone more. Like any life more um, uh, seasoned than an old circus performer right. from like the 1800s. Yes. Because there was obviously like zero cause for concern of safety. And I'm sure that standards were very different oh, back then. For sure. Um, so really cool stuff. I wish I could have seen her. I don't know if there's video footage out there of what she did, but That's she's fantastic. very cool. Um, she does have a headstone. Um, from when she passed in 64. This is our Tinkerbell, Tiny Helen Klein. Aww. So very sweet, very nice. Um, I do not believe that old women are still playing the role of Tinkerbell anymore, but there is plenty of information about this woman online. It is a lot of fun to I feel like that would require about. too many waivers. Yeah, I think so too. You also don't have circus performers of that age anymore, really. No. So. Well, and again, there was like some kind of, a, like there was grit of these people. Like right. traveling performers were were. You know, I mean, they would, they were basically like the openers for like snake oil sell salesmen mm -hmm. back in those days. So yeah. you'd have like these families of like acrobats and circus performers and like magicians and stuff that would go from town to town right. and do that kind of thing. It's totally different now. Right. I mean, I think God circus bless Circus performers in those today days. It would be like, you know, you have all these Cirque du Soleil people. Circus performers today are like YouTubers. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. You know, it's like Mr. Beast or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. The Mr. Mr. Beast's there you go. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Jack Wagner is the voice and narrator of the ride. Um, the let's see here. So one of the things that I had I had mentioned is that um, something about like I was I was kind of alluding to is there a basketball court in the mm -hmm. Matterhorn? And indeed, there actually is a small basketball basket basketball. Court, a basketball court in there uh it's extremely small and extremely unimpressive You've, have you seen pictures of it yes yes um it's not nothing interesting but um it is there it, you would not i would not invite magic magic johnson to come play sure but you know it is kind of cool the reason it was there because for the climbers from the sierra club they kind of needed something to do so they built it so they could hang out in the attic of the matterhorn and just oh, chill fun. and play basketball and stuff How pretty thoughtful. neat um, I used to always think it was like a full like NBA size court at the right. base of it. I don't know why I thought that. That, that the was... employees would just go in there and have some yeah, free time. Exactly. Um, yeah, there's there's some video footage of it at where like old Imagineers and stuff are talking about their experience there. Let's talk about the keeper of the Matterhorn real quick. Let's do it. So a legendary story says that there is a growling monster known as Harold, and he lives inside the mountain. And he will do anything to protect his home. He was added in 1978. Would you, if you had to make a guess, would you say it's a Yeti or an abominable snowman? Well, Expedition Everest has a Yeti. So is this one an abominable snowman? It is. Correct. Okay. Um, 
so I, I I heard that it was an abominable snowman, and I was like, that sounds like it could be right, but I wanted to double check. I went on Disney's official website, and um, indeed it does say, like the mm-hmm. quote that I pulled says, a legendary story says that the growling monster known as Harold, the abominable snowman, lives inside the mountain, so on. And um, I was watching a video from Provost Park Pass on YouTube, just kind of like, he has these really great videos of like, you know, seek 10 secrets you didn't know about whatever, and like, uh, you know, it's it's cool. He's got good stuff. Um, and he actually was like, I don't know if it's a Yeti. He kept calling it a Yeti, but he's like, I don't know if it's a Yeti or if it's an abominable snowman or what. So he went around to like different cast members and was asking them. And I think the final score was like 11 people said Yeti and like three people said abominable snowman. Are you ready for this? Yeah. The Yeti is an ape-like creature purported to inhabit the Himalayan mountain range in Asia. In Western popular culture, the creature is commonly referred to as the abominable snowman. There you go. They are the same thing. Okay, fair, but the name is different. Correct. Yeah. So it's just Eastern versus Western cultures' names for it. Like, in Western culture, we refer to it as the Abominable Snowman, whereas they would refer to it in Asia and more of the Eastern countries. They'd refer to it as Yeti. If you look up the Webster or Oxford language dictionary definition of Abominable, it means causing moral revulsion um i don't have any the thought that wow. he has anything to do with morality i think he's just a big old guy you know i don't is he i just picture him as like seeming mean and disgruntled well he's just trying to protect his cave and people are skywaying through it and they are riding rides through it sure. playing basketball in there sure sure you know he's got a well, that's why I picture him as being just like disgruntled, like yeah. just being annoyed just bummed, and inconvenienced you know? by the humans. Mm-hmm. I think he's a very cool, very effective special effect. Um, there is actually one of the recent things is they actually behind like a clear glaciers or just clear ice blocks. They have a video of him running and like kind of like pacing back and forth behind um, where you can see him that way. There is a couple of animatronics of him where he's screaming at you, his eyes, eyes like light up and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you do see his little, you know, um, you do get to see his little layer, which is kind of fun. They, um, in, 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 uh, uh, they have this little area in there where, um, where is it? Uh, where, I want to make sure I have all the right stuff here. But anyway, he has like a, in his little layer, he has like a crushed up Skyway car. Um, oh, an orange funny. one, actually. He has like an old crushed up, one of the original Matterhorn vehicles. And then in there as well, um, there's actually a, um, there's actually a, 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 a crate that says Wells Expedition Scene. It's a tribute to Frank Wells, who, of course, we talked about last two weeks ago during the uh, Pixar Palorand episode. He uh, died in the helicopter crash on Easter Sunday in 94. Yeah. So they uh, they were able to do a nice little tribute to him, which I think is kind of fun. Um, and it's it's the Wells Expedition Crate. Um, and again, like there's just a couple of like mashed up ride vehicles and things like that to show how he like always Disney and giving the narrative story of, yeah. you know, whatever. So Cute. cool guy. Um, one thing that I found to be very interesting about Harold is that his body, original body, was actually a stripped down version of a gorilla on Jungle Cruise. So they stripped off mm-hmm. all the outside of a gorilla and then they refabricated him with abominable snowman garb. Wow. So isn't that, it's kind of a neat little thing. Yeah. Well, when it's described as an ape like creature, that makes sense. Precisely. Um, so if you, right now, obviously they've made replacements and stuff and he's, he's no longer there. Um, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, he's no longer there anymore. Um, and, and so you can't really like they, they upgraded all the animatronics and stuff. But if you were to go to, uh, cross the road to Disney's California adventure park, and if you get in line for mission breakout, if you are in the collector's queue and you look up along with figment, Mm -hmm. you will see the original Harold animatronic up there interesting which is kind of fun that is cute so the collector really just like loved disney stuff i guess and collected collected him i love easter eggs like that i know i think it's fun and disney's extremely good at at doing stuff um they're really really good at doing stuff like that so the sky the 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 matterhorn has gone through a couple of different 
iterations over time. In 1978, the coaster um, went through one pretty big significant change, including the addition of the um, snowman. That's when he was first introduced in 78. Um, and the bobsleds were replaced by two eight-car passenger bobsled. Um, and then, of course, the open interior um, was changed to tunnels of caves. Mm -hmm. uh, after the removal of the Skyway in late 1994, the Matterhorn was once again remodeled, and the, sp uh, the space that was previously used by the Skyway became something called the Glacier Grotto. There's like a waterfall that goes down the side of it, yeah. and that's where a lot of that happened. Okay. And again, they did cover up... Um, most of it. I was wondering if you were going to talk about that because I've never thought about there being a massive hole in it. Yeah. And, and like what happened to it. But there is yeah. like, yeah. So yeah, that would be why. Th there's, there has been very little change to it. It's a very classic ride. There's no IP. Um, there's like really no theming to it besides, you know, the abominable snowman and this and that. Um, at one point, there was talk about adding a Swiss pavilion to Epcot where they were going to have a Matterhorn style bobsled ride. Okay. And um, that was, but that obviously never panned out. And then Japan at one point in Epcot was also going to have a Mount um, Fuji style roller coaster. It was going to be like way bigger and way more intense and, and crazy and stuff. I would love to have experienced that, but um, that of course never came to be. Um, I have a trivia question for you. Okay. This is my show. But, I know okay. it is, but I was curious at the beginning of the episode how the Matterhorn compares to Expedition Everest. Mm -hmm. In what way? In terms of height. So a uh, Matterhorn is around 140 feet, roughly, give or take. You're, you're like, hey, is that correct? Are you looking? I, I have 79 feet. Um, wait a minute. Hang on. Matt, hang on. I thought I saw <laughs> 140. I have 79 feet. What the heck? 79 feet, son of a gun. Um, Wait. No, it's 100. Oh. No, the original Matterhorn was 147 feet versus the 14,700 feet of the original. Yeah. It was 1 100 scale. I was correct. Maybe it shrunk down a little bit over time, but no, it is actually it 147 says, feet. Yes, but if you look now. And that is from an article called Things You Might Not Know About the Matterhorn at Disneyland Resort from disneyparks.disney.go.com forward slash blog forward slash 2011 something rather. Correct, but if you look... It's the second highest point in Disneyland Resort behind the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, which is 183 feet tall. So... That's, um, that's a fact. I don't know where the 79 came from. Um, I mean, that is literally just... Like, it's on their Wikipedia page. So maybe, I don't know what they are comparing. Maybe that's like the height of where the roller coaster goes. When it goes up, it's, you know. I have no idea. That is a mystery. Um, but of course, like, you know, we know too that you can always change. Although, is that from Wikipedia? I don't if see I click it on anywhere website, on the it Wikipedia. It takes me to, no, sorry. If I click on the Google like information thing, it says 79 feet on it. Somebody's getting their facts mixed up, and I don't know what to think. I know. Yeah, everything else I'm saying, seeing says it's been the highest point in Disneyland at 147 feet. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, my point was... What's your, what was your trivia question? My point was Expedition Everest is actually 199.5 feet. That make that tracks because of the light on top, right? And so that is actually the tallest mm -hmm. attraction in Walt Disney World. Okay, so it is bigger than the Matterhorn because mm -hmm. I oh, was yeah, trying to sure. think in my head, and when I saw seventy nine feet, I was like, I don't There's think no way. Expedition yeah. Everest is two times the size, more than two times the size of the Matterhorn. So that makes more sense if Matterhorn's one forty seven, right, and Everest is one ninety nine point because um. Uh, Sleeping Beauty's castle, 77 feet, and Correct. the Matterhorn Tower's above it. Correct. So. Yeah. So I I believe 147. I think that's cool that they did the one-tenth scale. One one-hundredth, but yes. Yeah. One one-hundredth Sorry, I wasn't yes, trying to like... Yes, because 140... Yeah. 14,700 yeah. feet. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sorry, I wasn't trying to like uh, scale splain you. But... No, no, no. Yes. No, I think that's cool how they did that. Um, but yeah, I was just going to ask if you... 
had looked up or knew how tall it was in comparison to Everest. Yeah, it's it's not that much. It's about 25% smaller. Yeah, it's really not that much smaller. Amongst everything going on with the parks, um, there were proposed changes to the parks that would have been covering over the Disneyland interest. So this was when they were talking about doing Muppet Land in the parks. This is this is this is relevant. Um, they were talking about you know covering over the Disneyland entrance marquee, um, the famous Mickey shaped flower bed of the entrance to be a Kermit head, Miss Piggy taking over Cleopatra in a small world, animal appearing in Pirates of the Caribbean. And are you ready for this? Hmm. One of the propositions was to paint Matterhorn green. What for Kermit the Frog? No. Thank God Muppet Land fell to pieces because I, that would have been rough. That sounds terrible. I mean, you give me a candy birthday cake castle any day. Like, that is awful. So I thought that was kind of a funny little That's anecdote. That's terrible. It is, it is pretty that bad. That would have been a really bad choice. It is pretty bad. Um, okay, so here's the thing. There have been recorded, anyway, um... There have been, in Disneyland, recorded uh, 27 people have died in Disneyland Resort. This was as of January 2023. Okay. Two of those deaths have been on the Matterhorn. So I'm just going to, if if you have a sensitive stomach, just maybe you want to skip this end part. I'm not going to get too gruesome about the whole thing, but I will just share what happened. Sure. In 1964, a 15-year-old, I'm just going to spare the names because I don't, it doesn't, I yep. don't want to, yep. uh, supposedly they hit their head on one of the, like, see, like rocks that was above head as they were going through. Mm. It was presumed that they probably were doing something that they should not have been doing with their seatbelt. Yeah. So they stood up, I'm guessing, and then hit their head and that was that. Yikes. 20 years later, a 48-year-old woman um, she actually fell out of the back of the bobsled and um, she was struck by an oncoming one that oh, like supposedly her. killed her instantly. Wow. Um, this was all seen by a family from Idaho who saw this happening underneath them from um, the skyline. How traumatizing. I know. It's really, really For bad. Everybody. It's really, it's thing. really bad. Yeah. The people wow. like, yeah, it's tough. So, um, it's presumed, again, this is kind of a rumor because Disney, Disney's a little bit hush-hush about fatal injuries that happen. And most of the time they're like, you know, their PR people say that they passed away in the hospital. Like sure. they don't ever claim that anyone really died at the park. I'm sure, sure someone had. I'm sure people have. Well, there's but, a few that are undisputable right. that we know of. But Yeah. Um, but the 15-year-old in 64... Um, it is rumored that that could have been a de- decapitation, which is really rough to Ooh. think about. Um, and then they, yeah, so it's it's a really bad scene. Um, I, I'm not making light of anything, but I will say, like, their you know, safety regulations are there for a reason. Right. Um, which is why they say keep your arms and legs inside at all times, yeah. standing up, whatever. Like, it's yeah. really, really important for people to, to follow guidelines and stuff. I mean, obviously... Bad things should never happen to anybody, but sure. Um, yeah, it's it's but like it's critical a theme to park at the end of the it's day. Critical and, to listen to instructions. I mean, yeah. I always think about like I know that you have more room on Space Mountain than it seems oh, like. Oh my gosh, I was gonna say something about that. Yeah, it it just like when you see Space Mountain with the lights on, that's all I can think about is mm-hmm. oh my gosh, how easy it would be for someone to be killed if I they like, stood don't, up or stuck their arm out. I or don't something. put my hands up on Space Mountain. Yeah. In fact, I actually crouch down a little bit when yeah. I'm riding it, especially in Florida. I right. like will crouch down a little because I don't want to have my head taken off. Right. I know that's not going to happen because right. there's people far taller. I'm not a very tall person. I'm like 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, well, and there is more so, room than you think Right, there tons is, more but... room than I think, but I, I still don't. I know. I still don't I know. It roll makes those me crazy dice. thinking about it. That is kind of about... The long and short of this thing, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of history behind it. It is the only Matterhorn in any Disney park. I would put it up there as one of my favorite Disney rides because it is such a great roller coaster. Um, of course, over the years, they've made a bunch of changes and updates to it, um, none of which have 
resulted in a smoother ride experience, regrettably. And that's actually one of the biggest complaints about the ride, frankly, is how rough it is for people. Yeah, I can um, see that. Do you have a specific... Now, you haven't been on it nearly as many times as I have, but do you happen to have like a specific favorite side of whether it's Tomorrowland or Fantasyland when you're writing it? If my memory is correct, I think I only actually got to ride this once. Because okay. I think the previous time that we went to Disneyland, mm -hmm. me, you, and your brother waited in line and it shut down. Mm-hmm. If that's correct, that is correct. Right? You we are right about that. We got stuck in the yeah. line, and then they ended up shutting it down because it wasn't operating correctly. Mm -hmm. So I think I've only ridden it one time, and I have no recollection of which side we rode. Okay, <laughs> I think we probably rode Fantasyland because that's my favorite. So I would, um, I would venture to say that Tomorrowland would probably be my favorite side. That's fair. Um, I think that. Fantasyland for me is my favorite because you can see, like, I love it when you're going around it. You can see, like, Alice in Wonderland and the people on the outside of that attraction. Sometimes if you time it right, you can see a parade. It's just, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, the Fantasyland track is actually slightly smoother of the two. And um, the Tomorrowland track, however, is a little bit sharper turns, a little bit bumpier, but it is yeah. 100 feet longer. So okay. you get, like, a 15-second longer experience, yeah. which is neither here nor right. there. Um, the final thing about the ride mechanic, of course, is that if you remember, it does drop you into a big splash of water. Yes. And that serves the purpose of cooling down the ride, and it serves also as a natural braking system. Hmm. So, yeah, because the ride is not, I mean, the ride is basically like just a, uh, you're just falling. Right. So, like, you know, there is no braking system within the ride Gravity's itself. Gravity's doing all the work. Gravity's literally doing all the work for you. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, really great ride. I, I love it. I think it's a A plus besides the backbreakers. Mm -hmm. And uh, 10 out of 10. So maybe an A solid A. I'll give it an A minus. Yeah. yeah. It's like a 93. That's like a 93%. 93% fresh. Yeah. So <laughs> I do, man, I wish that they would bring a, um, I wish that they would bring Mount Fuji to Japan Pavilion. That would be really cool. Japanese government, if you're listening, you should cough up the, the money. Does the Japanese government own that pavilion? I, I thought it I was know always only, like. I know all, some of the embassies are in charge of their pavilions, right? I think most of them are, yeah. Most of them are all Boy, there is a rich history behind embassies. I think we may have just hit on our next series. Bum, bum, there is bum. a rich vein of history of... Behind the pavilion. And the ones that never came about. Like yeah. the... Oh my gosh, I think we have something there. I think so something. anyways, that's the Matterhorn. I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, that was great. That was a really good series. I think that Disney should bring back Lover's, Lover's Lane. That'd be great. <laughs> Um, I think, you know, I think, I think it, it was great. So <laughs> I think that was great. I think it was great for people, you know, back in the old days when go out, go up to Lover's Lane with your best gal and do some necking. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for listening to the Parks Academy. We've had a great time doing this little series and, um, we will be back next, next week with you with some hard hitting facts and information about Disney parks and resorts. Uh, thank you again so much to our sponsor of the show, Deep Cut. You remember, you can get 15% off, 10% uh, off, excuse me, 10% off your first order using the code TPA10 at checkout. Um, you can find us online at theparksacademypod.com as well as on Instagram at the Parks Academy. And um, we are, we're kind of just everywhere else doing our thing. So thanks again so much for listening. And, uh, you know, start on the Fantasyland track. You're going to say something? Yeah, before you say something, up. yeah. I remembered another thing I'm excited about. Okay, hit me. I have a conspiracy theory. Oh, is this about High School Musical? HMS? Yeah. All right. You go ahead. Um, HSM, also, sorry. HSM. HSM. <laughs> sir. Um, hello, friends. Before you sign off with us today, I just wanted to throw out this little Easter egg that I thought was interesting. So Disney Plus posted on Instagram a video that looked like a trailer for High School Musical 4, The Reunion. However, if you watched the full video, it was actually a preview for the next season of High School Musical, The Musical, The Series. And if you have followed along with either the series or with the High School Musical films, circa like 2006, when the first one came out, you may know that we have not seen Zach or Vanessa in pretty much any capacity for the last like 10 years and 
I did a little, you know, sleuthing to go back. I remembered that Zach had posted on his Instagram last summer that he was in front of East High and posted a little quote like, you know, once a wildcat, always a wildcat. And I went back to Vanessa's page and she posted something in June of last summer and had posted the quote about, you know, when you meet someone, it's like kindergarten, you know, that cute romantic scene on the roof. Yeah, I remember that one. I think I remember. that's too coincidental that the two of them were there within a few weeks of each other. And I think the timeline probably fits for them filming an episode of this show, if not more than that. So they were not in the trailer. Only Chad, Taylor, Martha, and Ryan were in the trailer. Um, Sharpay, Troy, and Gabriella were nowhere to be found. But yeah. you related this... to me as like, the Spider-Man No Way Home when yes. Andrew Garfield kept denying, denying, denying. This may be an Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire situation. So if that's true, you heard it first here, folks. My prediction is we're going to get a secret Troy Gabriella Sharpay special appearance on the next season of High School Musical, the musical, the series. Mm-hmm. And, and that's all, folks. And that's all you have to say about it. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.